Welcome to Hornbill TV's Prime Time with Al Nuli. Ladies and gentlemen, what was your biggest news peak of the previous week? I think the intensity and episodes of violence in Manipur are decreasing compared to the first and a half month uh, of the violence since Manipur spiraled into chaos earlier. But the situation is still bad. Uh, organizations and citizens, including those from other states, have gradually uh, started to feel the silence of Prime Minister Narendra Modi on the Manipur issue. The anger over the Chumugirima rock slide also seemed to be ebbing, Naga style. Ladies and gentlemen, Naga people are known to have the attention span of a five-year-old. Uproar lasts only as long as till the next diversion. Uh, even politicians, I think, know this trait of the uh, of the Naga people. This is one reason why policymakers do not really worry when things start happening. They already know that the threats, protests, demands, and the empty press releases will mean nothing after you give it some time, and everything will be forgotten. Let's check out the top newsmakers from the previous week, ladies and gentlemen. Manipur is broken and tired too, ladies and gentlemen. The incidences of violence are comparatively lower now, but anything could happen at any time because tensions are still there. A lot of lives and a lot of property have been lost. The Manipur state government told the Supreme Court earlier that the violence in the state has claimed the lives of about 142 people at least till July 4th. According to media reports, the majority of fatalities occurred in the valley districts. The total number of people killed in the valley districts of Impal East, Impal West, Kakching, Tubal and Pishnupur was 101. Impal East and Impal West saw the highest number of deaths at 29 each, while 21 people were killed in Kakshin. 101 people have been arrested so far and 6,000, uh, yes ladies and gentlemen, 6,745 have been put under preventive detention. Among the hill districts, the maximum casualties were reported from Churachanpur, which is the epicenter of the violent clashes, where 28 people were killed, while 8 people were killed in Kangpoki. The report said uh, Churachanpur and Kangpoki experienced more than 1,000 incidences of arson each. Let's check out the next newsmaker from the previous week, ladies and gentlemen. Do you remember the July 4 Chumugidima rock slide that killed two and injured several others? I'm asking because suddenly the generally critical Naga people seem to be too busy elsewhere after all the outrage and the silence is deafening in this regard. Anyhow, Nagaland Deputy Chief Minister T. R. Ziliang on Tuesday said the National Highways and Infrastructure Development Corporation Limited should be prepared to answer to the issue. We are not sure what he meant by that unless there was a governmental inquiry into the whole issue. Knowing that the NHIDCL doesn't seem to have a very good reputation when it comes to listening to the state authorities, um, I think the government should straight away investigate the issues leading up to the July 4 tragedy. This will hold the people responsible for it accountable, fix responsibility and implement corrective mechanisms to deter similar incidents from happening in the future. Uh, Ziliang said also that he had directed the authorities to display the names of contractors beside the roads they built. We are not sure how this tactic will help in saving lives and prevent accidents except to shame contractors. Next newsmaker coming up, ladies and gentlemen. This is recent reported about a day ago, in a groundbreaking medical feat, Israeli physicians reattached the head of a 12-year-old Arab boy, Suleiman Hassan, after a horrific incident left him internally decapitated. This was reported by the Times of Israel earlier. Suleiman Hussein was reportedly riding his bicycle when he was hit by a car. 
the impact of the collision caused his head to be severed from his body. That's what the report said. The report said the ligaments holding the rear base of the skull were severely damaged. This left it disconnected from the top vertebrae of his spine. Uh, the boy was rushed to Hadassah Medical Center in Jerusalem, where he underwent a 12-hour surgery to reattach his head. Uh, Israel. The state of Israel's official Twitter account run by its foreign ministry said in a tweet that during the previous month, the boy was in a horrific car accident while he was riding his bike. He sustained life-threatening injuries when his head was severed from the neck. The surgery took place in June, but the results were not made public until July. Uh, reports say the boy has no neurological deficits of uh, or sensory or motor dysfunction and that he is functioning normally and walking without an aid after such an ordeal. Thank God for this marvelous thing. Let's check out our martial artist from Nagaland. The martial arts group Faith in Action from Nagaland has set a genius war record for the highest assisted kicks on the set of the country's top show India's Got Talent in Mumbai on July 5th. Martial artists are fortunately a sport these days, ladies and gentlemen. Those days we learn Taekwondo or Karate after watching too many Asian Kung Fu movies or we learned martial arts to beat up rivals in school. Uh, I have got beaten up a few times too in my school days after getting into fights. Amid the celebrations though in Nagaland, there was some not so fun news. Uh, as Nagaland was getting ready to host the 33rd Nagaland State Taekwondo Championship in Kohima on July 12th and the 13th, complaints that threatened to overshadow the uh, celebrations emerged. Sources complained to the media earlier about alleged poor accommodations being provided to athletes of various districts taking part in the championships. Athletes and participants were being accommodated in an under construction building. I hope that they work this out considering that the government seems to be keen on promoting sports in the state, at least on Twitter. Let's check out the next big news story from the previous week. After a tense and often acidic diplomatic standoff, Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has agreed to support Sweden's bid to join the NATO. The military alliance's chief Jens Stoltenberg has said, according to the BBC, he said the Turkish leader would forward Sweden's bid to parliament in Ankara and ensure ratification. Turkey had previously spent months blocking Sweden's application, accusing it of hosting Kurdish militants. As one of NATO's 30, 31 members, Turkey has a veto over any new country joining the group. Dimapur is not only the commercial capital of Naglan. It is also the extortion capital of the state. According to the half-yearly report of the Dimapur police, extortion is among the top activities that keep the Dimapur police busy as usual. The report showed a huge number of theft cases followed by liquor and drug cases and extortion forming the top criminal cases reported from Dimapur, Chumugidima and Newland districts. Earlier, the Dimapur Deputy Commissioner of Police for Crime issued a copy of the police's half-yearly crime report from January to June 2023. The report listed out various crimes according to the report uh, with theft uh, accounting for the highest number of cases at 145, liquor cases related offenses at 85 cases, drug related offenses at 60 followed by extortion at 28 cases and of course arms related offenses were at 32. Of the 85 liquor uh, related cases, the police arrested 94 people, 
91,436 bottles of various types of IMFL, uh, which were seized by the police, the report said, uh, of the 60 narcotics, drugs and psychotropic substances act cases, 85 persons were arrested. Of 27 extortion cases, the authorities arrested 38 people, while 33 people were arrested in 32 arms offense cases, the report said. Uh, trust me, ladies and gentlemen, most of the extortion cases go unreported due to two reasons. Compliance from people, especially small shops and businesses. And second, fear and intimidation from the extortionists. Let's check out the other news. Music is integral to Naga culture, ladies and gentlemen, from indigenous music to rock music, we love it all. But of course, Naga musicians still have to carry uh, 25 lakh worth of musical equipment to play for a concert to be paid only about let's say 5,000 rupee or something in that nature but at least for this news program we have something to cheer about our friends from the Naglan Chamber Choir won two gold medals at the World Choir Games in South Korea which was conducted from July 3rd to the 13th. It is a big deal considering uh, that our team competed against 324 choirs from 46 countries uh, participating in the competition. The 30 member choir took part in two categories which is mixed chamber choir and contemporary choral music and won gold in both. Congratulations to Nagaland Chamber Choir from Hornbill TV ladies and gentlemen. India's venture into the exclusive space club continues. Chandrayaan-3, India's third lunar exploration mission, took off from the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Andhra Pradesh on Friday afternoon. The country's space administration hopes to land the country among the elite group of nations to have achieved a soft landing on the moon's surface. Uh, Chandrayaan-3 is the third lunar exploration mission by the Indian Space Research Organization. Ladies and gentlemen, it reportedly consists of a lander and a rover similar to Chandrayaan-2. Those were the big newsmakers from the previous week, ladies and gentlemen. We will be bringing you more news updates besides conversations on issues that impact us. I'm Al Muli. Keep watching Hornby TV. See you next time.